Um, welcome. Welcome to this very, very exciting uh, moment. Um, the first online edition of Transformation Digital Art. My name is Gabi, Gabi Weyers, and I'm director of Lima. And Lima is an independent art organization in Amsterdam dedicated to media art. Um, one could say we are an international pioneer and center of expertise in the fields of archiving, preservation and distribution of media art. And our approach is anchored within a multidisciplinary network, both nationally and internationally. In collaboration with museums, artists, academies and universities, we research and develop services and tools, but also methods and practices for dealing with digital art. Dealing with digital art in a sustainable way for both artists and institutions. The issues we are facing in sustaining our digital art heritage for future generations shows us the importance of envisioning and creating collaboration and lasting infrastructures of care. With this and the Transformation Digital Art Symposium, we offer each year a platform to present state-of-the-art preservation projects and approaches for software-based artworks um, to exchange and gain knowledge, to support our community, to inspire and to be inspired. Our focus in 2021 is on documenting digital art, rethinking histories and practices of documentation in the museum and beyond. As we know in performance and digital art, documentation has become the focus of conservation and presentation strategies. New practices also challenging existing forms of documentation resulting hopefully in new ways of thinking about documentation. That's why this symposium is focused on that topic. The symposium is part of a series of events in the scope of the project Documenting Digital Art, a three-year research project. And for the first time ever, all participants, Gabriele Gianacci, Katrina Sluis, Francesca Franco, Annette Decker, and myself are together in one event. The whole symposium today, tomorrow, the day after will revolve around the question, what can we learn from other practices within and without of the scope of the museum? We aim to show and discuss exciting and existing new strategies for the documentation, transmission, and preservation of digital art for, for and by artists, curators, and conservators. You saw the program. I'm super excited to kick off so many sessions. Um, we start today with the history of documentation by Gabriella Gianacci, followed by a workshop with HEC, short project presentations, and artist Dreesen Zetterstopper presenting and discussing their work and need for documentation with Vivian van Saase and Arte van Maurik. The discussion is moderated by Shiloh Phillips. But can I say more? As said, the symposium is part of a series of events in the scope of the project Documenting Digital Art. I'm happy to hand over to its coordinator, Gabriela Gianacci. Welcome, Gabriela. Thank you, Gabi, for um, inviting me. Um, Gabi has um, asked me to open the conference uh, by outlining how over the last 20 years, a number of well-known organizations have produced a series of guidelines about the documentation of media and digital art. Um, next slide. Um, what can be inferred from these guidelines is fascinating for a number of reasons. 
First, the term documentation seems to be used within a wide and expanding range of contexts, acquisition, conservation, marketing, installation, user experience, design, and so on. Second, it's no that the emphasis on the artist and the artwork is still crucial, though wider, to use Annette Decker's words, um, as a network of care. And these are clearly becoming increasingly involved in documentation and often change from iteration to iteration. Third, while works are increasingly documented by the public, museums do not tend to preserve audience-generated documentations. Fourth, by looking at these documentations, we can infer what researchers working in this rapidly evolving sector actually understand art to be. In this presentation, I aim to offer an overview of the main findings in the field in the hope that this will help us to further refine best practice in the sector. Next slide, please. One of the earliest international gatherings in which the documentation of media art was looked into by conservators and curators was a symposium Modna Who Cares, held in Amsterdam in 1997. The symposium, which was a culmination of a Dutch research project, the conservation of modern art 1995-97, concluded that documentation was a key element for the conservation of modern and contemporary art, identifying interviews with artists as one of the most significant forms of documentation in this context. All findings were then published in an homologous book in 1999, which constituted the first milestone in the field, leading to the formation of the International Network for the Conservation of Contemporary Art, INCA. And interestingly, the project included the possibility of weighing the options for conservation, allowing conservators to record a discussion in which they could record the reasons for a particular selection. This point marked a milestone in establishing that documentation could emerge as a product of a conversation. And next slide, please. Inspired by the Insight um, Installations 2004-7 project developed as part of INCA, the research group produced a number of best practice guidelines examining how installation art can be safeguarded and presented for future generations. The project was a collaboration between conservators, art historians, scientists and developers of information systems. An information architecture was recommended that aimed to record the evolution of artworks, in particular installations. The model considered, consisted, uh, sorry, considered four basic modules, identification and description, material and technique, location and exhibition history, condition and conservation. The model also provided instructions for documentation procedures, such as the creation of new records within different modules, additional records describing evolution over time, and the work's conservation history. Special features included links to various archives and thesauri, rendering the documentation more of an architecture, an environment, and evidencing the strength of the connection between documentation and the archive. As Gabi indicated in her interview to Jonah Westermann in Histories of Performance Documentation, Inside Installation also emphasized quote, how to document participation and interactivity, end of quote. Because of this, reuse and reinterpretation became a topic of research. Moreover, uh, BS noted again, quote, we started to see the work and the documentation as one thing. I repeat that. We started to see the work and the documentation as one thing. One could say that the work is the core and the rest is a shell around it. This means that they're always connected. End of quote. That's Gabby talking. This identification of the work with its documentation is crucial and has been at the heart of my work and the works of a number of researchers in this field. Next slide, please. Also taking place in 2004 at NIMC was a project 404 Object Not Found, which focused specifically, as the title suggests, on the remains of media art. Crucial was the raising of awareness as to who should be responsible for compiling documentation and whether possible low budget solutions would allow institutes with limited budgets to present document and preserve media art, focusing also specifically on net art and software based art and how they could be collected, exhibited, and preserved. Crucially, the work led to a paper by Gabi Diaz and Vivian Manzaza drawing attention to the complexity of preserving works in this field, for example, in relation to playback equipment and the stipulation about rights and restrictions to do with future iterations of a work. 
This important consideration raised awareness of the role of iterative documentation in tracking the evolution of works over time. Next slide, please. A subsequent symposium in 2010, Contemporary Art Who Cares, explored the current standard in the care and conservation of contemporary art. Obsolete equipment published in 2010 was one of the outcomes aimed at improving and ensuring the digitization and long-term preservation of audiovisual artworks threatened by the obsolescence and ephemerality of display equipment. As part of obsolete equipment, a number of strategies were identified, including storage, migration, emulation, and again, reinterpretation. Storage, of course, refers to the act of preserving audiovisual materials in their original form, but as the authors put it, it is problematic in that, quote, as soon as the carrier, the playback format of the equipment for playback or display becomes obsolete, the artwork itself dies, end of quote. In terms of migration, the authors noted, quote, the original appearance of the original artwork may change when the carrier changes, end of quote. And regarding emulation, they pointed out that there could be significant costs involved and it might be difficult to remain loyal to the artist's intention. These considerations may have played a role in establishing that reinterpretation was indeed a viable, though also perhaps, quote unquote, the most radical preservation strategy. And quote again, a dangerous technique if not used under the supervision of the artist him or herself, end of quote. Interestingly, the term original was often used by the authors of these recommendations as a major parameter within the emulation and reinterpretation of the work, something which, however, has in more recent years raised the question as to which version of a work may be the original, or whether one could still talk about an original in the first place. Next slide, please. Only a year after the symposium, modern art who cares, the variable media concept was developed by Johnny Politan in 1998, who at the time was an associate curator at the Guggenheim. The research led to what is known as a Variable Media Initiative, a network of cultural heritage organizations dedicated to the research of new media art preservation. The paradigm emerged from Guggenheim's research into the preservation of conceptual minimalist and video art. The Variable Media Network was one of the products of this initiative. Its main findings focused on the description of works through their behaviors, for example, installed, duplicated, as well as a set of tools known as the Variable Media Questionnaire and the Media Art Notation System. An interesting proposition was the fact that the network claimed to have devised an unconventional preservation strategy based on identifying ways that creative works might outlast in the original medium. This presupposes that works could be migrated once media have become obsolete. The questionnaire was described as, quote, an instrument for documenting the opinions of creators and others associated with the work as to how that work should be seen as, if at all, recreated in the future, end of quote, so future facing. The questionnaire thus highlighted the fact that the longevity of creativity will surpass that of technology. Moreover, the framework underpinning the questionnaire recognized that contextual information needs to form part of documentation to indicate, for example, variations among multiple versions of a work and capture medium independent behaviors of such works. Crucially, the questionnaire then encourages artists to define the work independently from the medium used so that the work can be reinterpreted if a medium subsequently becomes obsolete. The Guggenheim's conservation department subsequently developed identity and iteration reports around 2012, the latter taking into account the public's reception of the iteration of the work and visitor feedback, something now done also by other museums such as the Met, for example, to capture materials that may be pertinent to a specific exhibition. Next slide, please. Capturing Unstable Media was a research summary published by Sandra Faulkner and was from, from V2 in 2003. Recognizing the inherent instability of electronic media, as well as the difficulty in establishing the original state of a work, the study focused on the specificity and boundaries of these media and recommended the capturing of details that allow for the description of digital media works through occurrences, so documents related to the establishment of the time and place of the experience, Components, so documents related to the installation parameters, hardware, software, network content, for example. System design, moving image and sound format, user interaction, documents related to output and input, and artist makers, documents related to the artists, 
These recommendations show the importance of considering electronic art activities as process-based, taking contextual information into consideration and drawing attention to the fact that activities are heterogeneous, that works usually emerge out of interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary collaborations, the value of that and documenting that is huge. Considering user interaction is essential. And finally, that one must think of them as activities rather than just as artworks. Crucially, capturing unstable media lead to highlighted the differences between created and collected documents and noted the importance of documenting user interaction, not only through metadata, but also bespoke documentations of the user experience, complemented by interviews and recordings. This constitutes a conceptual model for the description of works that recognize the role of collaboration and distributed authorship. The model included an analysis of audiences and crucially distinguished three phases in the development of a work that all require documentation, the research phase, the development phase, and the implementation phase, expanding the idea of documentation to include not only reception, but also what occurred during the creative and research phases of a work, thus addressing also what the terms artist and audience might mean in these different contexts. Next slide, please. DOCAM, or Documentation and Conservation of Media Arts Heritage, was an international research alliance led by the Langlois Foundation between 2005 and 10, looking both at the documentation and the conservation of media art. The DOCAM researchers should capture the artist's original documentation of a work, such as models, simulations, interviews, documentation related to hardware, such as equipment manuals, exhibition parameters, such as physical space and budget, environmental parameters, such as paint acoustics, and so on. All such documents DOCA maintained ought to be attributed to a source so that future researchers, researchers could have a point of reference regarding their provenance. Thus, Caitlin Jones noted in her well-known 2008 survey of art documentation, DOCA draws attention to the wide range of disciplinary perspectives used in documentation and the fact that practices of documentation may have meant something quite different according to who was documenting. Aware of the inherent fragility and instability of new media works, DOCAM was one of the first to acknowledge the importance of documenting iterations of works, focusing on how these works behaved and what effects they generated. The DOCAM documentation model is based on four types of events, which each produce an expanding range of documents that can be added to digital work files. Crucial in this context is the work of V2 and Annette Decker in particular, who drew our attention to the fact that documentation can be seen as a process, quote, a tool for making decisions about the nature of a work, unquote, a form of presentation, quote, the material that is made by artists to explain and communicate their work, unquote, and method for recreation. Now, Decker also identified a series of documentation types, for example, for publicity and presentation, for reconstruction, preservation, for describing processual changes in the appearance of a work, for developing an aesthetic and authorial framework of reference for educational purposes, for capturing audience experiences, for capturing the creative and working processes of the artist, and in the context of conservation, for reconstruction and for preservation. This again indicates how this one term, documentation, in fact subsumes a wide range and a growing range of practices Increasingly, also a wide range of disciplines, which serve different purposes, at different aims, and even at different times. Next slide, please. A number of projects in cognate fields that made significant discoveries regarding documentation have been very impactful in relation to the documentation of digital art. Matters in Media Art or Media Matters was a large-scale inter-organizational effort by MoMA, SFMOMA, the Tate and the New Art Trust, which launched in 2005 and was dedicated to the preservation care and documentation of a range of media artworks. The consortia provided invaluable insight into what kind of templates, condition reports, purchase agreements and so on would be useful in the context of media art acquisition, loan and conservation. The template installation documentation guidelines crucially provides not only important information in relation to the installation of time-based media, artwork description, installation components, condition, media, equipment and installation and so on, but also acknowledges the importance of how the public encounters the work, enters the space, recognizing therefore that, quote, a non-technical description 
of what the viewer experiences can often be valuable, a valuable guide to installation, end of quote. Next slide, please. Tate also led the way in the field of performance studies documentation, winning two arts and humanities research council projects in fairly rapid succession. Between 2012 and 2014, Pip Lawrenson led with Vivian Mansaza collecting the performative, a research network that examined emerging, pra emerging practice for collecting and conserving performance-based art, looking at dance, theatre and activism. The network created the Live List, which provides prompts for those thinking about acquiring or displaying live artworks. The list recommends that artists are asked to provide a description of the work, but specifies also for someone who's never seen it before, suggesting that the basic parameters of a work, duration, space, number, and nature of performance, variability, and so on, should be captured in this process, alongside knowledge about how many forms the work exists in, whether the work evolves, whether it ought to be repeated, what the context is, how the work sits in the collection, whether work is participatory alongside questions about production, interpretation and audience. Subsequently, Acacia Finbo, then a postdoctoral student in the Performance at Tate project, worked with the conservation department to develop this list by considering documentation too. So the list currently asks a series of questions about documentation itself, including what forms of documentation are available, what needs to be documented and then for what purpose, what types of agreement need to be documented? What categories of documentation are present and needed for this work? And so on and so forth. Concluding with what is the status of documentation? Might it represent the work legacy? Can it be shown with the work in the future? Can it be shown with the work in the future? Really important point. These questions are evidence of the expansion of our understanding of what constitutes documentation and what role and value documentation may have in the museum context. These changes in the sector reflect important research in the field. Crucially, Annette Decker, Gabi Veyas, and Vivian Mansaza suggesting that the art of documentation already in 2010, 11 years ago, that with the arrival of performance as well as video or digital works, a shift occurred in museum documentation, whereby museums started to address the fact that documentation is a subjective process whose selection criteria are of great importance. This indicates that while provenance and transparency maintain important positions, the cohabitation of multiple forms of documentation will also prove to have significant value. As Lizzie Miller noted, media artworks challenge conventional documentation models because they require a strong focus on the user experience and on the inclusion of both the intention of the artist and the point of view of the audience, which means that it may be important to document quote, a dialogue between the ideal conceptual existence of the work and its actual manifestation through different iterations and exhibitions in the real world, end of quote. Next slide, please. Over time, a number of other organizations have played a significant role in the debates around documentation that, I've only not, that I have not given enough space in this synopsis, such as Scrum, ZKM, Rhizome, MoMA, SF, MoMA, the Stedelijk, the Centre Pompidou. Equally, a number of researchers have brought further insight into the field, including computer scientists such as Steve Benford, who's developed a self-documenting guitar. Many of them have come together in recent years here at Lima for Unfold, which has been re-examining reinterpretation as an emerging practice for the preservation of digital artworks. The vision behind this approach is to use reinterpretation to capture the hybrid contextual and above all challenge changing life qualities of artworks, rather than proposing endless updates of platforms and operating systems. Next slide, please. The short presentation bringing together the interdisciplinary research in the field of media and digital art documentation has hopefully shown the rapid pace in which the topic of documentation has evolved, evidencing crucially that the term documentation needs to be contextualized and the provenance of a documentation needs to be made more explicit. Perhaps studies comparing different documentations should also form part of museum documentation, and perhaps museums could more readily share documentations with each other to allow for the study of iterations of works over time across different museums. But what about artists then whose works are not in museum collections? And what about audiences? While there are cases of audience documentation in some of the museum's iteration reports that I mentioned, these rarely include audience-generated documentations. Of course, as has been pointed out by others, these studies have shown how museums have tended to move away from the consideration of the artwork as an object 
towards its consideration as a concept, performance, medium, experience, including its reinterpretations by other artists over time. This is the dimension in which media and digital art is perhaps most similar to performance, which means that from a documentation point of view, we're only just beginning to look into the field. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela. <laughs> so that was a kickoff, really uh, overview the history and a good point of departure uh, for the for the symposium. I'm very happy uh, you give this interview up and or this overview, I must say. And yeah, I immediately have lots of questions, of course. Uh, and I think most of them we will address the upcoming days. Um, so thank you. Um, I would say let's go to the next session. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Workshop with Hack is uh, uh, starting soon. Uh, the people that did subscribe have a link. And uh, after that, at 7.30, we will back he we'll be back here for the rest of the program. And if you have any questions about links and how things work, please scroll down in this stream description. There you can find all the, all the info. So thank you again, audience and Gabriela, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the workshops and uh, the rest of the of the events. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. Thank Thanks. you. Bye.